So this code example is a little more complicated than the last one because it consists of a doubly nested loop. So the, inner, the outer loop is going to iterate over every character of string um, and check whether that character uh, begins an instance of this substring, which that check is going to be done by the inner loop. So again, I'm going to uh, figure out where all of my uh, variables are going to live. Again, the argument are passed in the A registers. The return value count is going to be passed back in V0. So we're going to allocate that in V0. I note again that this function doesn't call any other functions, and so as long as I don't use the callee saved registers, I can avoid allocating a stack frame. Again, I'll allocate i into register t0. I notice that the bound of this loop is something I have to compute, and rather than compute it every time I go around the loop, I'm going to try to compute it once um, because string length and substring length don't change in the body of the function. So I'm going to compute that once and I'm going to store that into T1. Um, I have another variable, match, which I'm going to allocate to T2. I have J, which I'm going to allocate to T3. And I'm going to have some uh, Temporaries, I can see now, to, to compute these intermediate addresses, but I'm going to wait until I write the code to write those. So let's go ahead and start the code. Um, and I'm just going to write this from top to bottom again. So again, I'm going to initialize count with a load immediate into V0 of 0, and this is count. Um, I'm going to first, well, I'll go ahead and initialize i to 0. And I'm going to compute this strlen minus substrlen. And I do that with a subtract instruction. And I said I was going to put that in t1. And strlen is coming through a1. And substrlen is coming through a3. And I'm going to remember that that's strlen minus substrlen. Okay, so I'm up to this point and I'm ready to start the loop. Again, uh, I have to worry about the case where uh, I don't actually do any iterations through this loop. So I'm going to, uh, for the CS loop, I'm going to put the, the initial label there and uh, do the comparison right away. Again, I'm going to invert the condition of the comparison. So this was a less than, so I'm going to replace it with a branch greater than or equal, um, comparing t0 to t1, in which case I'll go to cs exit, the exit of the whole function. So I've handled that. I'm ready to get into the body of the loop. The first thing I have to do is initialize match to true, and true is 1. And so I'm going to load immediate, and I said that would be T2. Initialize that with 1. Now I have the, the inner loop to do. Um, the first step of that is initializing J. I'm going to load immediate T3 with 0. Um, and then I'm going to test the, the inner loop condition. So this is the beginning of the inner loop, so I'll call that CSI loop. And I'll do that test with a, again, a branch if uh, greater than or equal. So I'm, again, inverting the condition. In this case, I'm comparing T3, which is J, with substring length, which is A3. And that will be... Uh, I'll call that exit cs uh, done inner. Um, so then I translate the body of the loop, and I have to do two loads to load these characters. 
And so recall from the previous uh, thing, because these are character strings, all I have to do is, is add the base pointer to the offset. I don't have to scale the offset. So to, to load this one, I'm going to allocate a temporary T4 to, um, and I'm going to add the base address to I first, and then another step I have, I'm going to add J. So I, the base address is A0, and I is in T0. So, so far I have stir, the address of stir I, and then if I add J onto that, so I'm adding T4 to where J is, J is in T3, then I have the address of I plus J, and I can load by it, and I'll go ahead and put that into T4, so I'll overwrite that address since I won't need it again, and that actually gets me the value of stir I J. Do a similar process with substir, but I only need J, so I'm going to go ahead and use T5, And there I'm adding substr. Substr is in A2, and J is in T3. So I'm going to add A2 to T3. That's going to be the address of substr J. And then I'm going to do a load, again, reusing T5 to actually get substr of j. Um, and now I'm in a position to do this comparison. So I have this character and I have this character and I can check to see if, if they're not equal. Again, I'm going to invert the condition, so I'm going to check whether it's equal. And if so, skip over this. So now I have a branch if equal. See if t4 is equal to t5. And if so, I'm going to do a C go to CS skip. Otherwise, I need to uh, set match to zero and break. And the break is going to go to the same place that this condition would. And we already called that CS done inner. So to set match to false, um, we said that match was in T2. And so to set that to false, I can do a load immediate of T2 with 0. And then I can do an unconditional jump to CS done inner. And that handles the body of the if statement. Now I have to handle the case where we skipped over the body of the if statement. And I'm done with the loop except for incrementing j. And so I'm going to do that increment of j with an add, and j is in t3. So t3 plus 1 written back into t3. Um, so this was setting match to false. And then I have to check to see if I need to do another iteration of the loop. So I'll go back and do C a, do an unconditional jump to CSI loop. I've now finished the, the inner loop. Um, and I want to do this check to see if match is uh, true or not. So I'm going to, to, again, invert this condition, see if match is equal to 0. So I'm going to do a branch if equal. OK, so I forgot this. I have to do the CS done inner label, CS done inner label because I'm for the, the end of the loop. And then I'm going to check to see whether match is 0. So uh, match was in register T2. I want to check to see if it's 0, because if it is 0, I don't want to increment count. Um, so if that's equal to 0, 
I'm going to do CS skip to. Uh, otherwise, I want to add one to count, do count plus plus, and we put count in V0. So we want to add into V0 from V0 plus 1 CS skip 2 and now we're at the end of the outer loop we have to do the I plus plus and then go around for another iteration of the inner loop so the I plus plus um, is adding to T0 adding 1 to T0 which is I doing another iteration of the loop which means jumping back to CS loop and that's the end of the loop when all that's left is this return condition and so that's when we exit the outer loop so I need that CS exit label but other than that we're done we can just do a jump register RA